Warning, the following video is a mere test run. This may or may not be something that I do on a regular basis, but I'm interested to see your feedback. So let me know what you think at the end of this video, and I will see if it's something that I do on a regular basis if I can afford time. Thank you everyone for your support thus far on this channel, and I am not trying to take away or add to any other person on YouTube with the content I am about to bring to the table. And welcome everybody to a trial edition of IG Linux News. Now, apart from a less corny name, this show is really going to be about just the stuff that mattered to me in the Linux news of this week. Starting with the distribution releases that have come out in the last seven days. Now, first of all, we have MacPup 528. Now, MacPup, of course, is based on Puppy Linux. Uh, it has also got compatibility with Lucid Puppy, so you do have the uh, compatibility there with the long-term support release of Ubuntu. It is an E17 uh, distribution. It does have uh, Firefox 7, and it is updated the E17 window manager, which it has compiled from source from version 1.0.999 and all the themes etc are looking very nice indeed. Moving on we have the Linux Mint Debian Edition. Now this is probably the most long-awaited release of the last couple of months as people have been looking forward to an updated ISO for the rolling distribution that Linux Mint Debian provides. The highlights of this distribution basically include all the updates in the distribution up to this point. We have all the Linux Mint 11 features, install improvements, update packs which means you can select which uh, parts of the system you want to upgrade, we have GTK 2 and 3 theme compatibility, and obviously we have updated software and packages. Now the interesting stuff here is that now we have the ability to upgrade certain parts of the Linux distribution, thus focusing more on stability and accessibility, not so much the bleeding edge. If that made any sense to you, then you are way ahead of me, so I will move on. We also had updated Linux distributions such as Scientific Linux 5.7 as well as CentOS 5.7. Obviously Red Hat is rolling out their uh, updates for uh, all the distributions based on Red Hat 5. We also have PCBSD 9.0 Beta 2, which of course it's BSD, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it still is pretty cool. And we also have the Proxmox 1.9 Virtual Environment Distribution, which is apparently based entirely around Debian, used really for virtual environments. Moving on to Linux as a whole, we do have now a native Enlightenment port, an EFL E17 port to the PlayStation 3, so that is pretty fantastic. There are new games, books and magazines into the Ubuntu Software Center as of the last couple of days and they should be showing up sooner or later in the repos near you. And with the impending release of GNOME 3.2 we are starting to get some usability back, especially the suspend on laptop lid close, so that is good news for all of those people using GNOME 3 on their laptops. Of course Linux.com and all of their subdomains are still closed due to the attack that they had recently. However, after Linus Torvalds had thrown the kernel up on Git, uh, the development still seems to be going fine. They are working on security with the Linux.com and all the subdomain, but nothing serious was compromised. At least that's what I've heard. And the last news item for this week is that the Linux kernel 3.1 may be having a new logo. Now obviously they experimented with a new logo back in the 2.x series of the kernel, but as we are now at kernel 3.1, they are looking for new logo ideas. One humorous one that does catch my eye is the comparison between Windows 3.1 and the Linux kernel 3.1. That's about all the stuff that caught my eye this week. As I said before the video, feel free to leave all kinds of feedback in the comment section below. I'm not sure if this is something that I can sustain on an every week basis, but I'm just gonna toss the idea around and see what you guys think. I did have a suggestion from one of the viewers that was that since This Week in Linux seems to be a little bit patchy in the, up, in the frequency of the uploads of his videos, that I should start covering a few news items. Now, I don't in any way intend to impinge on what This Week in Linux does. He's, it's a very good channel, but at the same time, it would be nice to get that steady stream of news updates that he is famous for. Hence, I sympathize with said viewer and they inspired me to create this trial version of what I may possibly do in the future. Again, thank you all so much for watching and being patient with these experiments. It'll be interesting to see where this goes in the future. Peace out, everyone.